Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I pray you'll have a face to face meeting of the healing Jesus in Jesus' name. You picture him in front of you. And then, whatever challenge you have, whatever difficulty you have, is still the same. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever, he'll touch your life. Yeah. Healing Jesus. Everybody shout, Healing Jesus. Yeah. It will touch your life. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. Yeah. Father, we thank you for this time. We bless your name because you are God. And you said, I'm God, I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Your people at such a time as this will not be consumed in Jesus' name. Whatever is moving on, moving in, in the air, Call it pandemic, call it plague, call it disease, call it sickness, call it affliction. Will not touch your people, will not consume your people in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil i pray lord as you did in days gone by because you have not changed that same power that same anointing will touch everyone heal everyone in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and the believing people of God, workers, servants of God, leaders in our church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to an important subject. Relevant today, important in the past, and important today, and important until we'll see the Lord face to face. It's the divine healing and health for God's obedient children. We're coming to Exodus chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 58, 28, 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will keep that which is right, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. The Lord says, I am. The unchanging God says, I am. The healing God says, I am. The covenant keeping God says, I am. He says, I am the Lord. Nothing can decrease the nature, change the nature, alter the nature of the Almighty God. He is still the healer today, is the I am that I am. Is the one that did it in the past and the one that is doing it today and the one if you are the only one believing child of God in the whole world it will fulfill his promise in your life it says I am the Lord that heals not that healed in the past and cannot do it anymore not that he will heal in the future but today is not doing it is his regular continual continuous business is doing it every time he's doing it in your life i see a healthy person in front of me 
a well sound person in front of me every joint of your body every bone in your body every flesh in your body i hear everything in your body receiving the divine healing touch him on today in jesus name it's a covenant the lord has made with his own people he made a covenant with abraham he fulfilled a covenant mosaic covenant he fulfilled he made a covenant with israel israelitish covenant he fulfilled he made a covenant with david he fulfilled now he has made a covenant with the church a better covenant that is built and based upon better promises through the lord jesus christ and jesus is more precious is greater is higher is more exalted than abraham than moses than joshua than david than israel and if he fulfilled the covenant he made to all those people the covenant the better covenant he has made through the lord jesus christ he will fulfill i said he will fulfill do you remember, do you remember any time that God was talking to Isaac and God will say, Isaac, I'm doing this for you, not because of you, but because of Abraham, your father. And so whatever the condition of Isaac and whatever the level of Isaac, God said, it's not because of you. I'm doing this because of my promise unto Abraham. And then anytime he's talking to Israel as a whole nation, he'll say, Israel as a nation, the Lord has chosen you. And the Lord is going to do this not because of you, but because of Abraham. And if he could do that for Israel and for Isaac and for everyone there because of Abraham, he's telling you, not just because you pray, not just because you, you have faith, I'm doing this because of Jesus Christ that I have the better covenant with and because of Jesus, the healing covenant will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Anytime you go to pray, be wise and just say, because of Jesus. Lord, look at the covenant and look at what you said you'll do because of Jesus. Lord, look at my need and look at the provision you said you'll make because of Jesus. Oh Lord, look at what I'm going through. You said you will deliver and I'm asking because of Jesus. And you end the prayer with, in Jesus' name I pray, that thing has been done. It must be done because it is the covenant that he has with the church, has with the Christian, has with every kingdom citizen because of Jesus. It will be done in your life. Divine healing and health for God's obedient children. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the foundation of God's covenant with his purchased people. Notice the word covenant there. The foundation of God's covenant with his purchased people. Number two, the faithfulness to God's covenant Notice the word covenant there. The faithfulness to God's covenant and his peculiar people. Number three, the fullness of God's covenant. Notice the word covenant there. The fullness of God's covenant for his precious people. As we think about covenant, you remember the marriage covenant. And the marriage covenant wants to say i do and she says i do that covenant takes effect whether you are feeling great or feeling strong whether you are in the day or in the night whether you are walking on the road or you are in the office you're a married man you're married to that sister that sister is married to you that covenant stands Think about the covenant with God that way. 
that no matter where you are, you are in church, you're in covenant with God. You're at home, you're in covenant with God. Anything is happening, you're in covenant with God. And something is happening in the head, in the mind, in the blood, any part of your body, that covenant is still there and you stand on the provision, on the promises, and on the power, and on the privilege of that covenant is God's covenant. Point one is God's covenant. Point two is God's covenant. Point three, for his purchased people, his peculiar people, his precious people, it will be done in your life. Let's come to number one, the foundation of God's covenant with his purchased people. We have read already Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Okay, let's read it again. And said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do, and will do. It says, I will keep my part of the covenant. But you see, the covenant connects to uh, two entities, yourself and God. And God says, I'm always faithful. I'm always powerful. I'm always purposeful. I'm always able. The divine ability has no problem. But now he says, on your side, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Another good amen. amen. You know, and there are people that try to learn how to pray. And they pray, and they use flowery words, and they say, God Almighty, God Omnipotent, God Omniscience, and God forever, and God of yesterday, and God of today, and God of tomorrow, and the God of angels, and the God of all universe, and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord is looking at you, he said, you think you know how to pray? That is not how to pray. Look at David. David came, and he said, God. God, this is what you said do as you have said and that was the end of the prayer do as you have said now God has said something he said I will put none of these diseases upon thee why don't you just say God this is what you said do as you have said and then he said, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Why don't you just pray simple prayer? Lord, you said you are the Lord that heals me. Do as you have said. It will be done in Jesus' name. Look at Acts chapter 20. We're reading from verse 28. Acts chapter 20. We're reading from verse 28. Take it therefore unto yourselves and to the flock and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with the own of blood which he has purchased with the own blood how precious is the church the way you know how precious the church is, is that you look at the price by which that church had been purchased. When you want to buy something, if you sell the foot match at the door of your house and you go and purchase that thing, that thing you have purchased is as valuable as your foot match. If you want to buy something and you sell just one of the chairs in your house to purchase that thing, that thing is as valuable as the chair you sold. If you have to sell all your property, everything you've got, and you rake everything together to purchase something, that thing you have bought is as precious as 
all the price you have paid God who have given an angel those angels are in their thousands and millions innumerable if he gives only one of those angels to purchase your redemption heavenly will lose nothing out of a million a trillion innumerable just take one for the purchase of the church but that will be the value of the church but now it's only begotten son the most precious in heaven the greatest in heaven the highest in heaven the very one that is next to god almighty that's the one he has sent and that one died for you to purchase his church that's how valuable the church is anytime you pray never again will you say lord i am worthless lord i am dust and ashes you mean that god saint his only begotten son who is greater than all the angels put together to purchase dust and ashes don't say that again that one is old old testament before the revelation came that jesus christ will be the savior he has purchased the church with his own blood and because of that he makes a covenant with us a covenant of healing he will heal you he will deliver you three things we're looking at number one the covenant of the omnipotent the covenant of the omnipotent number two the condition of our obedience number three the continuity of his operation continuity i am the lord that healeth i continue to operate I continue to manifest i continue to do and to observe and to fulfill everything i promise the continuity of his operation look at number one number one is the covenant of the omnipotent we're looking at um, De deuteronomy chapter 29 and we're reading from verse 9 deuteronomy 29 verse 9 keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper in all you do you will prosper did you know that that everything you do if for the lord and for the glory of god because of the covenant you will prosper in jesus name and look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 22, and we're reading from verse 27. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord. That's the I am. We saw in Exodus. And as we're moving on from Exodus to Leviticus to Numbers, to Deuteronomy and to all the books of the Bible until Jeremiah he said I still am behold I am the Lord the God of all flesh is there anything to hard for me you didn't answer that no look at verse 17 in verse 17 it tells us oh lord god it says you are the creator of the heavens and the earth and there is nothing too hard for thee nothing too hard for the lord in your life nothing too hard for your healing nothing too hard and lord god behold that was made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm and there is nothing to hard for thee that's the omnipotent god that's the all-powerful god and because of that he will in your life luke chapter 1 verse 37 in luke chapter 1 verse 37 for with God, nothing shall be impossible. 
in my life in my family in your ministry and in your family nothing shall be possible with god he will do it look at verse 72 in verse 72 to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant and god likes to be reminded of that holy covenant look at point number two there number two is the condition of our obedience the condition of our obedience is promised us a said if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, Exodus 15, 26, and will do that which is right in his sight, and give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, now understand, he will not tell us to do something that he knows we cannot do. He will not say, listen, if we have deaf ears, he will not say, do, if we are paralyzed and inactive and we're impotent and we cannot. He will not say, keep my statutes if he knows that we're so weak and powerless because of human nature. He has changed our nature. He has turned us around. And he only tells us to do what he knows we can do. And now he says, when you do what I know you can do, and you do it for my glory, in obedience to my word, I will put none of those diseases upon thee which are brought upon the world, upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. He gives us the condition there of obedience. Look at Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. If you be willing and obedient, you know, before you can be obedient, you have to be willing. It's a matter of the heart. That in your heart, you're willing. And in the day of his power, the people shall be willing. And if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. I said ye shall eat the good of the land. What does that mean? If we're obedient unto him, what kind of life are we going to live? What kind of privilege are we going to have? What kind of provision are we going to have fulfilled in our lives? Look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 21. Deuteronomy chapter 11. And we're reading from verse 21. This is beautiful. It says that your days may be multiplied. You will not die prematurely. Okay, I will not die prematurely. The Lord confirmed that in your life in Jesus' name. That your days may be multiplied. And the days of your children, your children will not die prematurely. In the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. Look at this, look at this. As the days of heaven on earth. As the days of heaven on earth. Those children of Israel, I wish every one of them had listened to God. They would have lived the days of heaven on earth. What are the days of heaven? Happiness, health, strength, might. Courage, achievement, fullness of joy, that's what you are going to have. That your days that you might have, the days of heaven on earth. Verse 27, in verse 27, a blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. 
the blessing is conditioned on obedience and the grace to obey the Lord will increase in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Number three, number three is the continuity of his operation. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee, and is still the great unchanging I am. Malachi chapter three, we're reading from verse six. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 For I am the Lord I change not Everything I promised I stand by I change not Every covenant I've made I stand by I change not Every good thing I offer to you I change not I stand by all those things, all those good things I offered unto you. Every condition I laid, I still stand by, by them because I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Can you imagine in your mind's eye all that happened? between Exodus and Deuteronomy and Joshua and the judges until the times of the Proverbs and the Ecclesiastes everything that happened until Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, now Malachi at the end of the Old Testament it says look at all the water that went under the bridge Look at all the armies that came against the children of Israel. But you know why you're still a nation, Israel? You know why you still abide as a people, unconquerable people? Because I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Look at what Jesus said upon this rock. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Look at what had happened in the first century, all through to the 20th century, all through to the century in which we are now. And look at the church in Africa, in Europe, in America, in Asia still standing you know why because God is God therefore the church is not consumed he did it for Israel he's doing it for the church he's doing it for you I said he's doing it for you whatever may happen whatever wind may blow whatever affliction may come that thing will not consume you. All you have to do is to go into the presence of God and spread the situation in the sight of God and say, God, do what you have said. You say that you are the almighty God and you change not. And therefore, the sons in the plural, the sons of Jacob, the tribes of Jacob, the people of God are not consumed. Do as you have said, you will come out of that situation. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today, tell me the rest, and forever. You know, every believer is inside those words. Yesterday, that's where the apostle Peter, John, James, Paul, that's where they were. Yesterday and today. Between yesterday and today, that's where you find Wesley, Martin Luther, and then you find Charles Finney, 
DL Modi, all those people, TL Osborne, between yesterday and today. And then today, that's why you find yourself. Thank God you're still alive. I'm still alive. You remain alive in Jesus' name. And then between today and forever, that's where all those who will be converted who are not converted now, that's where they fit in between today and forever. That's where all the saints of God standing upon the promises of God, that's where they stand. And it says from yesterday to today and to forever, Jesus Christ is still the same. The same healer, the same redeemer, the same savior, the same powerful and mighty God, and he will do it in every life in Jesus' name. His operation continues. His performance continues. His miracles continue. His healing continues. His preservation continues. You will enjoy all that Jesus provided on the cross of Calvary in Jesus' name. Number two now. We'll see the foundation number two. The faithfulness to God's covenant and is peculiar people we're coming to deuteronomy chapter 7 and we're reading from verse 9 deuteronomy chapter 7 we're looking at verse 9 know therefore that the lord thy god he is god the faithful god which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. To a thousand generations. Now, when you say a generation, a generation from the Bible is about 40 years. And when you multiply 40 by a thousand, what do you have? Quickly, quickly. 40 times 1,000. What is that? 40,000. 40,000. Now calculate from the time of Adam, of, from the time of Adam to the end of Malachi, just 4,000 years. And from the time Jesus came, and now till today, just about 2,000 years add together and you have just about 6,000 years and God were told by the word infallible that he keeps his covenant to a thousand generations 40 in thousand places 40,000 years and when just six years after that, he's faithful. I said he's faithful. He must fulfill his promise. He must fulfill his pronouncement. He must fulfill his prophecy in your life, in my life. And it still goes on until 40,000 years. He will do it. I said he will do it. The faithfulness to God's covenant and to his peculiar people. Look at first Peter chapter two verse nine. First Peter chapter two verse nine. But she a chosen generation. Ye a chosen generation. Yeah, a chosen generation. Now, if there are so many people, and then you choose one out of those very many people, why? The reason is the same reason you chose a why. To become peculiar to you, to become completely yours, 
and to have somebody you're going to share your mind your knowledge and your life with and to share your property your inheritance with that's why you make the choice why as the lord chosen you as part of the church to have somebody to share his revelation with and to share the resources of heaven with and to share his property inheritance with and to share his power for healing with that's the reason he has chosen you thank god i am chosen because i'm chosen i am special and because I'm special, all his peculiar promises, they are mine. They are yours in Jesus' name. But ye, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. How do you teach royalty? How do you treat royalty? You treat royalty in a special way. You don't teach, uh, choose royalty and treat royalty as refrag, as every day can hurry, as a foot match. You treat royalty in a special way and the priesthood. You treat them in a special way and ye are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. A holy nation is a little circle inside a bigger cycle. That means, let's take for example a nation. That nation is the big circle. And then the church there is in a smaller circle. And it's inside there is part of that nation. But is treated in a different way. And that's what the Lord is talking about us. And he says, a peculiar people. A peculiar people. Your life is peculiar. The grace of God in your life is peculiar. Your actions are peculiar. And your privileges are peculiar. That's what the Lord has made of you and made of me. And it says that he should show for the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thank God you are peculiar. Thank God you are different. Thank God heaven looks at you different from the way he looks at the people of the world. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the faithfulness of God in keeping the promises. Number two, the forgetfulness of God's people to keep his precept. Number three, our firmness in God's covenant to be kept perpetually. Our firmness in God's covenant to be kept perpetually. Number one is the faithfulness of God in keeping the promises. He will not fail. I said it will not fail. It will keep the promises in our lives in Jesus' name. And look at this one in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 56. 1 Kings chapter 8, chapter 8 and verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that has given a rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised look at this look at this there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of moses his servant there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant now understand Moses lived until the end of Deuteronomy all those years of judges Joshua Ruth for Samuel second Samuel until the time of first Kings Moses was not there and look at God even though Moses was gone, 
there has not failed just one word just one statement of all his good promises that he made that he promised by the hand of his servant moses look at this christ came at the end of matthew end of mark end of luke end of john he was crucified he rose again he went to heaven acts romans corinthians galatians and so on until this time now there has not failed one word say good amen, amen. picture it yourself this way here is moses here is jesus who is more honorable of the two who is more accepted to god of the two who is more exalted of the two if the word given by moses everything was fulfilled and there has not failed one word of all the good promises that he promised by the mouth of moses how much more all the words that he promised by the mouth of jesus when he says whatsoever you ask the father in my name i will do it that word will not fail heaven and earth may pass away but my word shall not pass away that word will not fail by his stripes we are healed that word will not pass away he that believeth on me the works that i do he shall do and greater works than these shall he do because i go to my father that watch will not fail my father walketh hitherto and i walk that watch will not fail in jesus name is the faithfulness of god in keeping the promises let's come to number two there number two is the forgetfulness of god's people to keep his precepts that was the problem of those children of israel they forgot they forgot i pray we well, will not forget i will not forget Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 in Jeremiah chapter 2 reading from verse 13 for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and huge them cisterns broken cisterns that cannot hold any water that was their problem I pray that will not be your problem. I will not forget. I will not forget. I know you will not forget. You are so faithful to God. You left everything behind. And you are here at short notice in this workers retreat. As you are faithful in obeying God, in serving God, in working to, for God. The Lord will continually be faithful unto you in fulfilling his promises in Jesus name. Then he tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38 now the just shall live by faith the just shall live by faith you come to christ you've turned away from sin you turn to him as your savior and you become justified and the same faith that saved you will keep you saved in jesus name the faith that brought you in will keep you in in jesus name now the just shall live by faith but if any man draw back if any man draw back that's not me i said that's not me i will not draw back 
if any man draw back he says my soul shall have no pleasure in him you know is the turning back is the going back is going back to the dregs and the draws and the pollution of the past and the sin of the past that makes people to miss the fulfillment of the promises of god in their lives i will not draw back if any man draw back why do they draw back they draw back because of the pull of the flesh their flesh is pulling them and they cannot say no to that flesh they draw back by the pull of the world and they cannot say no to the world they draw back because of the old habits drawing them and pulling them and they cannot say no that's they but you Anytime Satan knocks at the door, you keep your door locked. You say, no, I've come out of the world by faith. I remain in the kingdom by faith. You'll not be forgetful in Jesus' name. In verse 39, it says, but we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul number three here now number three is talking about our firmness in god's covenant to be kept perpetually firmness you're firm about that and you will not allow anything to draw you back and as long as you abide faithful and you're keeping that covenant all the promises that the covenant will be kept for you in jesus name second chronicles chapter 15 verse 12 and they entered into a covenant to seek the lord god of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul that's all we need to do I need to renew that covenant every day i have opened my mouth to speak unto the lord that i will follow god i will not turn back and i will keep what i have said and as long as you are committed to that all the days of your life you'll enjoy the presence of god you'll benefit from the provisions of the lord and the promises of god every time every time you pray god will recognize that's a peculiar special child and spectacular thing will be happening every time to you in jesus name point number three now in point number three is the fullness of god's covenant for his precious people any precious person here today i said any precious person there today the lord will fulfill everything he has promised as to special precious people in jesus name look at isaiah chapter 43 isaiah chapter 43 and we're reading from verse 7 Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. These people, by, it says, Everyone that is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. And I have formed him, yea, I have made him. And then he tells us in verse 21, in verse 21, he says, he says, these people, the people of God, these people, precious people, these people, peculiar people, these people, purchased people, these people have I formed for myself. Look at that. You are not for Satan. Say, I'm not for Satan. I'm not for sickness. I'm not for affliction. I'm not the doormat of the persecutor. I can't hear the people of God. 
I am not the rag that Satan will use to scrub his floor. He says, these people, they purchase people of God, have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. They shall show forth my glory. And you will show that forth in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. The covenant and the promise of healing. Number two, the covenant will partake us of his holiness. Number three, the covenant of his precepts in our hearts. Look at number one, the covenant and promise of healing. We're coming back to Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. It says, and he said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, thy God, because you were saved, thy God, because you made a personal choice. Now, there are people at the point of salvation, they make a personal choice for the rest of their lives. When they're supposed to obey the Lord, they're looking at brother so-and-so, they're looking at sister so-and-so, and they're waiting. They don't make personal choice anymore. And yet, at the point of salvation, personal. At the time of sanctification, personal. At the time of being baptized in the Holy Ghost, personal. But then, as they walk in the pathway of duty, as they walk in the highway of holiness, they don't make it personal anymore. But look at the word, if thou personal will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and thou wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear, not the ear of the church, your own ear. You'll give ear to his commandment and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are put upon the Egyptians. Sickness is personal. Affliction is personal. Oppression is personal. And so your obedience to the word of God must be personal. You're not looking here and there. And then the claiming of the promise of God that Lord, this is what you said to me. Fulfill it. That's personal too. And as you go in line with that, saved, personal, praying, personal, believing, personal, claiming the promise of God, personal, holding on without wavering, personal, the fulfillment of the promise will become personal in your life in Jesus' name. Then he says, I will put none. Of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. He is the Lord, he heals me. He is the Lord, he heals me. It will be fulfilled in your life in jesus name look at matthew chapter 8 we're reading from verse 8 matthew chapter 8 verse 8 the centurion answered and said he didn't wait for the pharisees he didn't wait for the sadducees he didn't even hide under the garment of peter but he said 
by himself. And he answered and said, Lord, he called him Lord, I accept you now. I make you now Lord of my life. I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, speak the word only. The word that created the whole universe, speak the word only. He spake and it was done. He spake and the whole earth was created. Speak the word only. He upholds the whole universe by the word of his power. The word that upholds the whole universe. Speak that word only. You are the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And he came here and that word became the power that operated on earth and every infirmity wherever that word came all the infirmity was healed that word is what i expect speak the word only and my servant shall be healed somebody say amen that word is still powerful today I said that word is still mighty today. Look at Matthew chapter 24 and in verse 35. Matthew chapter 24. We're reading from verse 35. Heaven and earth may pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Heaven and earth. There may be something in the sky. And you cannot see the sky anymore there may be pandemic on the earth and you cannot see the earth very well anymore but the word of power of the lord jesus christ shall never pass away that word is coming to your life today that word is coming to your body today you are healed in jesus name Look at number two here. Number two is the covenant with partakers of his holiness. In Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 72. Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 72. Is to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. He will remember that covenant in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 73, he tells us, he says the oath which he swear to our father Abraham, 74, that he will deliver us out of the hand of the enemies and that we might serve him without fear 75 in holiness and righteousness before him how many days you'll be healthy how many days you are well how many days you are victorious how many days you are serving the lord how many days you are holy and righteous how many days? You are happy and glad and joyful how many days? All the days of your life. I say amen on your behalf. Look at number three. Number three, it tells us the covenant of his precepts to be for our hearts. We keep this, and because we keep it, it is ours in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 8, we're reading from verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8, reading from verse 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, a more excellent ministry like is is comparing it with moses at the time of moses when the water came everybody drank and he christ has obtained a more excellent ministry at the time of moses when the manna fell 
everybody partook of the manna and now Christ has a more excellent ministry and you remember in the time of Joshua that when the Jericho walls fell it fell for everyone and everybody went in to the to the promised land and is comparing the Lord Jesus Christ with Moses with Aaron and with Joshua and with the rest of them and you know every time those people raised up like Moses raised up the serpent in the wilderness everyone that looked was healed and now Jesus has a more excellent ministry by how much also is the mediator of the better covenant which was established upon better promises now that means the days in which we are living not the days of moses not the days of joshua not the days of aaron not the days of elijah not the days of elisha it's not the days of ezekiel it's not the days of isaiah we're living in the glorious days of christ better promises excellent ministry it's a great mediator it's a better covenant and everything is established for every child of god for you i said for you for me for me if what the god at the time of moses everybody was filled and satisfied today better time better era better generation and better period everyone will be satisfied with the fullness and the fulfillment of the promises of god in jesus name it is yours it is mine everything it is mine all the promises mine all the pronounces mine all the pronouncements mine everything and now belongs to you where is he where is she amen amen why don't you stand up and say lord i thank you all the promises are mine i thank you power is mine i thank you healing is mine i thank you deliverance is mine i thank you i come in the name of jesus and everything he has provided will be mine tell the lord open your mouth and praise the name It's yours. You're precious in the sight of the Lord. You're peculiar in the sight of the Lord. Sickness must not stop your journey. Infirmity must not hinder the progress of your ministry. For yourself, for your wife, for your children for everyone that is peculiar to you you must have joy over your family it's a covenant that the lord himself has put in place and he says i am god i change not 
and because it changes not that's why the promises are yours today and jesus christ the same yesterday and today and forever always the same he has not changed he had the cries of the people that came to him in days gone by yesterday and today he's still doing the same thing and forever he'll continue to do the same thing he will answer you he answered the centurion he will answer you he answered that woman with issue of blood 12 years he will answer you the same yesterday today and forever he did it all through matthew mark luke and john he's still doing it today he answers every prayer ask it shall be given you seek and ye shall find knock it shall be opened unto you for everyone that asketh receiveth he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be opened is answering you right now and when he left he gave the key to the believer this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they cast out devils they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover it's answering your prayers right there it says i give you my name that whatsoever you ask the father in my name he will give it to you it's answering your prayers right now that's why Peter and James came to the beautiful gate and he saw that man about 40 years of age. He had never walked. And then Peter said, look on us. Silver and gold are by none. But what I have, I give unto you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk and he held him by the hand lifted him up and the man walked and lived praising god glorifying god he has not changed jesus the same yesterday today and forever heaven and earth may pass away but my words shall not pass away that word is in your mouth he answers prayer the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much elias was a man subject to like passions as we are and he prayed there would be no rain and there was no rain for three and a half years and he prayed again and heaven poured down rain he did it you will do it is the same god that says i am god i change not that's the same God you are serving now. The God of all flesh. Is there anything to hatch for me? There is nothing to hatch for him. Even today. You remember? How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And he went about doing good healing all healing all healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him 
that word is still valid and Christ the giver of the word is still valid faithful he will he will no doubt let him ask him face nothing wavering and then the Lord will do it abide in me let my word abide in you that whatsoever you will ask in my name will be done you live at a better time than the time of moses you're standing on better ground than the ground Moses stood on you have a better ministry in Christ than the ministry of the old covenant people and when they never they open their mouth the Lord always answered them and as you open your mouth the Lord answers you he cannot fail his word cannot fail his promises cannot fail He has answered your prayers. My prayers are answered. Say that from the depth of your heart. Say that convincingly to yourself. You will see the answer. You will enjoy the answer. And that answer will be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Raise those victorious anointed hands unto the Lord as a sign of praising the Lord, glorifying the Lord, knowing that that word has been fulfilled in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you because you have not changed and every word out of your mouth has the power of omnipotence that follows after it to make it fulfilled. Your words of promise, your words of power have been fulfilled in all your children, all our workers in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we thank you for reminding us that you are the same yesterday and today and forever and that your word will not pass unfulfilled. Heaven and earth may pass away, but not a judge, not a teacher, not a dodge, not a punctuation mark will go away unfulfilled in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. By your stripes, we're healed. Amen. We're well. Amen. We're strong. Amen. I pray, Lord, your healing hand will touch everyone right now. Amen. You are the healing Jesus the delivering Jesus, the redeeming Jesus. And you are here in our midst. Touch everyone. Heal everyone. Perform your miracle of deliverance and healing in everyone in Jesus' name. 
we accept we believe we confess it is done for me it is done for me it is done lord let there be a performance in every life a fulfillment in every life feel every heart of the joy of the lord and the joy of the lord will be the strength of everyone in jesus name it is done it is done i am healed i am well i am made whole what god has taken away will never come back again <laughs>